So in recent years, I think as a field, we've, di we've discovered that our sample sizes are very often not based on anything. We set out to develop a study and then we decide upon a number of participants that we want to collect, very often based on some heuristics, like 20 participants in each condition is enough. So the concept of statistical power is actually a way to quantify the probability that you'll find a statistically significant effect if there really is a true effect to be found. And it's based on the effect size and the sample size and the alpha level that you decide upon when you design a study. And this is actually a very important part of designing a study, figuring this out, your sample size, justifying your sample size. And statistical power is one good way to do this if you want to find a statistically significant result in your study. If you design a study, you want to have an informative result. So you want to make sure that the data you collect will tell you something about what's likely to be true about the world. And that's the moment that you can think about these issues. Before you collect the data, that's the moment where you can think, okay, how can I design an informative study? And power analysis, while you are designing a study, make sure that your data collection will be as informative as possible given the resources that you have. So if you don't think about the sample size before you design your study, the problem is that your sample size might not be good enough to draw informative conclusions. This is especially problematic if you do not find a significant effect when you analyze the data, because in this case, you're not really sure if there's really no effect or if you just didn't observe a significant effect because the sample size was too small to have a sensitive study. Now it's a very common situation that you actually don't know the effect size of your study, which is one of the things you need to do a power analysis. And I would say it's always the case that you don't know the effect size, because if you already knew the effect size of your study, there would be no use to collect the data. You already have the answer that you want. So you're always in this weird situation that you need this information to design an informative study, but you have to guess a little bit of what it is. So you have to make, have to make an informed judgment about what it could be based on related theories, or something that you have done before. Or what you can do is decide upon the smallest effect size that you actually care about. And that's easy. You can say, well, if it's smaller than this, then I don't care about it. Make sure that you have a study that's designed to find the smallest effect size that you're interested in, and then you can always draw good conclusions. So a problem of having studies that are not well designed, so where power analysis is not a central part from the beginning of your research line, is that now we don't really know how often we have these uninformative results, where we have non-significant results but we don't know what's happening. And very often these things are not shared, so we have publication bias, and if you have this non-significant finding, people find them very hard to interpret. So you often have a situation where an editor tells you, yeah, the effect was not significant, but it could be due to a lack of power. Now that's an annoying situation to be in because you wanted to make a statement. So in a good informative study where you've powered for the smallest effect size of interest, you can say this is really what we care about and we did not observe this. So I can make a stronger statement that there's really nothing that we really care about going on in this research. So that's one advantage of having a well-powered study. So how do you get started with these power analysis? One thing that you can do is ask someone else so there are actually people in some fields that are called statisticians and it's their job to help you and advise you to do this. So if you have no clue where to start, ask someone else who has experience. That's a very good starting point. On the other hand, it's also not very complex to get some sort of good estimate from a power analysis. So determine on which effect size you find interesting and then you can use software that basically does the calculations for you and gives you a good sample size that you might want to collect. One additional benefit of doing a power analysis is that you can early on determine whether it's actually feasible to collect this data. And if you've looked at, for example, a meta-analysis and you see that it's very likely that the real effect size is going to be smallish, and you plug in these numbers in a power analysis, you are very often surprised how many people you actually need to collect. Uh, to get an informative design. And in these situations, you might decide to focus on a different research question or that it's better suited to have a larger collaboration of individuals together collect large data sets so you have an informative study because the power analysis tells you you cannot do this by yourself. So that's why it's useful to take a step back before you design a study and think, can I actually design an informative study to begin with here? In my experience, when I was doing my own PhD, I very often used heuristics. So whatever you do, 
it's good to improve upon this practice of just using a rule of thumb because they're always wrong. So whatever you decide to do, try to move beyond this. Power analysis is maybe a little bit difficult to get started with, but get started with it because anything you do will be an improvement over current practice. Make sure that you design more informative studies and move forward in doing better research.